the world is perishing in sin and we have a message, the balm of Gilead. And our theme uh, verse is, And so I just want to ask a prayer. Kneel where you can. We'll ask that the Lord be with us. Father in heaven, we do count it a privilege. We thank you for life. We thank you for our health. We thank you for the privilege of living in this free country. And I ask respectfully that we might take our salvation as seriously as our great adversary is taking our demise. Forgive us for our sins. Keep us under thy wing, Lord. And I pray that the Holy Spirit might be our unseen guest to guide us, not in confusion, but in the truth that was once given to the saints. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Tonight we're going to talk about Jehovah Witnesses. But before we do that, I want to show a principle. The principle is in Isaiah 8.20. It's, does anybody know what it says? To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this, there is no life in them. What does that mean? The law, we know the law is referring to the law of God, and we know the testimony was Jesus Christ. He came to this earth, it says in Isaiah 42, 21, he would magnify the law and make it honourable. So he showed, he came in the seed of David, he was Emmanuel, God with us, he combined heaven and earth and he showed before the onlooking universe that the law could be kept by fallen humanity. And that's where the victory started. But we know that it says in John 15.10 that um, I, Christ said, I've kept my father's commandments. And so that's where the whole, to test a religion, you must ask them that. That's Isaiah 8.20, to the law and to the testimony. Jesus testified that it could be kept he proved that and he didn't tell lies. He said in John 15, 10, um, I've kept my father's commandments. And he, he also said in John 14, 15, uh, if you love me, keep my commandments. And so on the basis of this, you most probably all met Jehovah Witnesses. Well, I've met them all over the world. I've met them in Canada. I've met them in Australia, America and New Zealand. And I could tell you stories all night about dealing with Jehovah Witnesses. I... Traditionally, when I asked them, and I said some on the, on the street in Mosgill the other day, they handed me a flyer and I said, do you have your Bible with me? And of course, I asked them to look up Matthew 18, 11, and they were surprised to find it was missing. And they went into a huddle and they, um, they exchanged a few quiet words amongst themselves and then I got them to look up uh, Matthew 17, 21. And then... I asked them to look up uh, Matthew 23, 14 and then Acts 8, 37 and they got a little bit upset because they are on the streets to tell you that they're wrong and the people don't know anything and they believe they know the whole truth. But I studied with Jehovah Witnesses. I nearly became a Jehovah Witness but I was hauled out of it by Seventh-day Adventists and I also uh, showed Jehovah Witnesses several Bible verses that show that Jesus is Jehovah. And, but I, I've only really got through to one Jehovah Witness, and that was on, I was working on natural gas pipelines in New Plymouth, and we're putting a pipe across the White Pr River, uh, and we're about to lower it in, and I'm in the trench with a shovel, and one of the inspectors was a Maori fellow by the name of Nepia, and he was a Jehovah Witness. And we talked often, but he didn't show much interest in what we believe the Seventh-day Adventists, but I'm scheming in the trench as I've got a shovel at six foot deep. I'm throwing the rocks and that out so it doesn't rupture the wrapping on the pipe because we're going to lower it in after lunch. And he's having his lunch sitting on the front of his four, four by four vehicle. And I said to him, Phil, I've been thinking, why don't we change the direction of this pipeline? And he, his eyes popped up. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, instead of going right out to the road and a right angle down the road, why don't we just curve it around the paddock? And he nearly swallowed his sandwich. He said, who do you think you are? Only the New Zealand government can change this, the direction of the pipeline. It's already been planned by the experts and, and you ain't the expert. 
And I said, well, I, ju I just thought it'd be a good idea. He said, I told you, you're not the New Zealand government. Why would you suggest something? I said, well, you Jehovah Witnesses changed Jehovah's law without asking him. So he blinked a bit then. One, one night I was in a, uh, at my sister's place and it was dark and I'm loading some books into the back of a van. So I put the hazard lights on to see what I was doing. And I put quite a few boxes in and a book fell out and I didn't think any more, thing more about it. I picked it up and threw it right down the front of the van and it went to, and it went to uh, the front on the dashboard in front of the steering wheel. Next day I was going somewhere. I called in to see a friend of mine in Kaiapoi and we're discussing, I was dropping off some health products and all of a sudden there's a knock on the door. And he looked and he said, oh, the Jehovah Witnesses, I'll get rid of them. So he was going to get rid of them. And I jumped up and ran out behind him. And as he's telling them to buzz off, I'm waving at them to say, hi, how, how are you? You see, so they didn't know what to do. So we got talking and I immediately said to them, do you know, have you, uh, you people, when did Jesus come back? And they said, he appeared secretly in 1914. And I said to the younger one, because they don't tell them, their past failures, and I said, "Do you have you always taught that? Yes, we have. And I looked at the older one and said, that's not true. You first taught Jesus would come back physically and visibly in 1874. He didn't turn up. Then you changed it to 1878. Then you changed, you said world peace would break out in 1914, and the worst war the world ever saw broke out. And I said, then you made another statement in 19." 18 and then 1920 and they all failed so you're 100 percent consistently wrong and i i was egging her on a bit and then i said you built a house for abraham isaac and jacob in sunny southern california to come back and live in and uh you said he hit that abraham isaac and jacob would come back in 1924 but they didn't come back and you built this beautiful house called beth beth serum and I said, well, you didn't, do you know why they didn't come back? Because they were looking for a, a home in heaven built by the hand of God. And she exploded and she said, you can't show me a picture of this so-called Beth Serum. And I'm look, leaning on my vehicle and there's the book that fell out of the ba bag the night before. And it was God's channel of truth is at the watchtower. And I, I knew there was a picture of that. So I reached inside and got the picture out and showed her the picture of Beth Serum. So that was God's hand, I believe. But just remember that they claim they have Jesus' name, God's name right, Jehovah. But Jesus said in Luke 6.46, Why call me Lord, Lord, and do not what I say? Can you understand? The Jehovah Witnesses say they've got God's name right, and that's questionable as well. And so... They say they got God's name right, but they don't keep his commandments. And that's what Jesus said. Why call me Lord, Lord, and do not what I say? And so it says in Psalm 138, 2, that God put his word above his name. Well, we know God's name is holy because the, first, the third commandment tells us that God's name is holy. And so there's ways of finding out and going through the labyrinth of errors that have been built up by men's traditions to find out where and, where and what is actually going on. So let's look at the Jehovah Witnesses. All religions have something in common. Do you know what that is? I'll answer that. They all think they're right. That's what they do. It doesn't matter who knocks on your door. They tell you that they're right. And so there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but, but the end thereof is the ways of death. Proverbs 14, 12. Jesus Christ only started one faith. Ye shall earnestly contend for the faith which was what? Once delivered unto the saints. Jude 1, 3. A curse on all who preach another gospel. That's Galatians 1, 8. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than which we have preached unto you, let him be what? Accursed. Now God winks at our ignorance. Revelation 12, 7 to 9 said, said Satan is going to deceive the whole world. We have to prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. 1 Thessalonians 5, 21. This presentation will give you information to challenge the Jehovah Witness missionaries who knock on your door two by two. 
according to Luke 10, 1. There they are on the street. I admire them because they're taking error around the world when Adventists are sitting down with the real truth. And God will take that into consideration. Famous Jehovah Witnesses. These, some of them, there's Michael Jackson was a Jehovah Witness, right? But he'd given his life to the devil until he started speaking and singing against the devil. So he had an accident one day at the doctor's. There's some more Jehovah Witnesses that are, I was taught strangers are controlled by the devil. That's a Jehovah Witness. And they do tell people that. There's mind control. Jeho the Jehovah Witnesses, two witness rule. That's the, if you tell anyone there was pedophilia in the church and the, if you're disfellowship, they think you are something terrible and you're marked. The Williams sisters are Jehovah Witnesses. They're tennis uh, players of renown. The basics of Adventism, there are more than 8.5 million active Jehovah Witnesses in the world. Witnesses study their doctrines rigorously to be able to present them to others. I just landed in Wichita and I'm in a shower. I'd just flown 16 hours, 17 hours from Auckland or Christchurch and I'm in the shower in the country in this place and I had to speak about an hour and a half later and I hear a knock on the door and this lady and her husband, they said to them to buzz off. And I jumped out of the shower and yelled out, they're Jehovah Witnesses, hold them there. So the lady said, oh, well, oh, well come in. And they were two African-Americans. And I got talking to them and I asked them to look up these verses that are missing and a few other things. And after we got down to the commandments of God and said the fourth commandment, <clears throat> says clearly that we're to keep the seventh day uh, holy. One of the boys cried and I said, I, I'm sorry, have I upset you? He said, no. He said, my mother's a seventh day Adventist. And he said, I was raised a seventh day Adventist and I went out into the world and my mother's been praying for me. So today I've found the truth back. Isn't that interesting? And so here they study their word, but they are ever learning but never coming to an understanding of the truth. If you want to find the truth, just go and look in Matthew, Mark, Luke and John and the book of Acts. You'll find out that the first church kept the, the Sabbath of God. There's the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, global headquarters in Brooklyn, New York. I've driven past it quite a few times. The Watchtower Education Centre is a, a complex of 28 buildings made up of school facilities service departments, art departments, and they all come from around the world to learn there. Awake magazine is published in 82 languages and has an average circulation of 32.4 million. The Watchtower magazine is published in 152 languages and has an average circulation of over 27 million. Our de dear friend Robert Churchill was a Jehovah Witness until he found this truth. Millions of DVDs are produced in their factories in Brooklyn. The Watchtower around the world. There they are in China, Tibet, Russia. They've been banned in Russia. Has anybody followed that story? Putin has banned them. Jehovah Witnesses spreading literature in Haiti. There's a Chinese Jehovah Witness with pamphlets. There's the Kingdom Hall in Mexico. Jehovah Witnesses Convention in Frankfurt, Germany in 2006. Jehovah Witness Convention in Montreal, Canada in 2006 as well. Jehovah Witness Convention in Melbourne, Australia in 2006. So they come from all over the world and they're enthusiastic about this truth. But I personally believe they're deceived, right? Here they are in Fiji. Jehovah Witnesses in Fiji break for lunch. I've stood on the same wharf there in Suva. 70,000 attended this Jehovah Witness convention at St. Petersburg in Russia. Jehovah Witnesses' values. They need for a strong God-based family unit. Jehovah Witnesses' leadership covers up pedophilia in their church. Is there a child molester at your kingdom hall? Would the elders tell you if there were? These are Advent, uh, Jehovah Witnesses that have left the faith. The regular Bible study and value in the home. They can read basically the same Bible. It's, they used the King James Bible up to 
1960, and then they bought one out from the Textus Receptus. They used the te Textus Receptus. Uh, sorry, they used the uh, Vaticanus and the Sinaiticus manuscripts. Jehovah Witnesses claim that they are persecuted, but they are quick, quick to ostracize and persecute their own members. They shun family while complaining of persecution themselves. Jehovah Witnesses are heavily involved in church, usually attending five meetings per week at their local kingdom hall. They, they have training schools in different parts of the world. Witnesses who spend at least 840 hours of witnessing during a year, an average of 70 hours per month, are known as regular pioneers. Witnessing. In 2005, over 6 million individuals or families in 235 lands were studying the Bible with the Jehovah Witnesses. There they are in their uh, interlinear Bible translation, which has been condemned as a false Bible. Their health. Drinking wine, beer, or other alcoholic drinks in moderation is not forbidden in the Scriptures. Psalm 104, 15, 1 Timothy 5:23. However, heavy drinking and drunkenness are wrong in God's eyes. That's what they said in the Watchtower, November 15, 2006. Health. Though Jehovah Witnesses do not actually prohibit smoking, the practice is frowned upon. It is said that smoking pollutes the body and should therefore be avoided. Jehovah Witnesses speak out against gambling. Gambling is a form of greed. If you wish to please Jehovah, then you will refrain from any form of gambling. Jehovah Witness History. There's the, the Zion, Zion's Watchtower publication. C.T. Russell was born in Allegheny, Pennsylvania, USA, on February 16, 1852. His parents were Presbyterians of Scottish and Irish descent. But I, I'm not into, into uh, conspiracies when it comes to them, but that he, he was a member of the family of 20, if that means anything to you. At the age of 27 years, Russell begins publishing Zion's Watchtower. The first issue had a printing of 6,000 copies. By 1914, the printing of each issue was about 50,000 copies. The Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania was officially formed. Charles Tass Russell became president in 1884. Russell and his associates saw newspapers as an effective way of reaching large numbers of people. In fact, by 1913, it was estimated that through 2,000 newspapers, Russell's sermons were reaching 15 million readers. Hail him, hail him, earth new sovereign. They said Jesus came secretly in 1914. Well, you and I know that's absurd. C.T. Russell and six associates made a trip around the world to further the preaching of his message. There's the ocean liner they travelled on. By the end of 1914, Pastor Russell had presented the photo drama to audiences totaling over 9 million in North America, Europe and Australia. That's quite dramatic and sensational, isn't it? 9 million with error. Here, Judge Rutherford, new lecture series on government and peace, victory, fascism or freedom, Face the facts and other free admission, no collection. When Ta Ru Charles Taz Russell died, then Judge Rutherford took over after him, right? The Watchtower considers Pastor Russell the faithful and discreet slave that, that is now ruling the Watchtower from heaven. But that can't be right because Judge Rutherford changed many of his teachings. So after Russell's death, Rutherford was controversially elected second president of the Watchtower Society. One-seventh of the members left in disgust. Watchtower leadership found guilty of sedition and jailed in 1918. There they are, from the tallest down to the smallest, and they were imprisoned for 20 years because they refused to bear arms. Were they right or were they wrong? They were right. They, 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 and, and God will remember that for them, but... Uh, that after the war, the sentences were refuted or made null and void. Newspapers fanned the flames of persecution of the Bible students. Hear that fact? Face the facts. Judge Rutherford preaching in London. There they are in London. London Company of Jehovah Witnesses preaching Jehovah's kingdom is at hand. 
That's what I say to them. The Lord shall descend from heaven with a squeak. Is that true? With a shout. They claim he came secretly in 1914. That's nonsense. Judge Rutherford proclaimed that millions now living will never die. Well, I know an Adventist who's got a copy of that book. And they, tr they tried to change the book because that was in 1920. Now we're in 2020 and everybody at that time has died. And they tried to cl cling on and say, well, there's one old lady who hasn't died yet, right, who was around in 20. So that's clutching at straws because the Bible clearly says that no, nobody knows when the Lord comes back, but you'll understand the season. Large convention at Cedar Point, the call went out, advertised the king and kingdom. People believe that. The, my Bible says that the elements are going to melt with fervent heat. Here they go, an emphasis on door-to-door -door and personal preaching begins. There are the watchtowers on the streets. The Bible students adopt the name Jehovah Witnesses at the convention in Columbus, Ohio. Early witness publications. Does, I've got a lot of those books mainly not real and not a real interest to uh, Seventh-day Adventists. Satan's subliminal signs in the JW publications. Can you see that? Just like in Seventh-day Adventist books, right? Watchtower Educational Center established at Patterson, New York, where they go to train. The Jehovah Witnesses have suffered persecution in many countries. There they are in jail in Germany. And then Jehovah Witnesses are persecuted in South Korea. There they are, Jehovah Witnesses and the Nazis. The Jehovah Witnesses have suffered in many countries, atrocities against Christians in Malawi. Malawi bans danger sect. The Jehovah Witnesses have suffered persecution in Malawi. They were kicked out. Mob violence sweeps through the US. Meetings are disrupted. JWs are beaten and property destroyed. But... They held to their convictions and most Adventists, they, they had 60% of the truth and they're giving 100% effort in spreading it out. Where if you've got a Seventh-day Adventist with 100% of the truth and most, most of them are watching TV tonight. Here, mob violence, the two on the right are going to be in, I think that's Quebec, Montreal, Quebec. And the, the Quebec's a Catholic province and here's the Catholic sergeant of police and they're going to beat these two Jehovah Witnesses up. So you've got to admire them for that. Witnesses imprisoned for their faith during the Second World War. Jehovah Witnesses in Nazi Germany. 8,800 uh, German JWs that, that were incarcerated. 2,800 of them were put in concentration camps. 1,500 JWs that died under Nazi tyranny and 370 were executed. Jehovah Witnesses abandoned Russia. There's, there's the proclamation by the government. And they think they're being persecuted for the word of God, but there's certain things we can do with Caesar and there's certain things we can't. And they show no interest in uh, uh, standing up and giving Caesar the right to rule in secular issues. So Trump warns Russia over Jehovah Witnesses' ban and urges members to seek asylum in the US. Jehovah Witnesses' churches burnt down in Russia. Jehovah Witnesses imprisoned in Singapore, their publications are banned. Jehovah Witnesses at a convention in America. Jehovah Witnesses doing street witnessing. What does the Bible really teach? Well, you and I as Adventists know that it teaches something a little bit more sensible than what they're putting out. Thousands flock to witness outreach. Audience, 253,000 overflowing two large stadiums in New York, Yankee Stadium and Polo Grounds. Here's 1961. Watchtower publishes the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures. And they, they're taking their message to the world. The Jehovah Witness beliefs. Jehovah is the only true God. Jesus was created by God and is not the uncreated second person of the Godhead. The Holy Spirit is God's active force 
not the uncreated third person of the Godhead. When Christ returns, he will be invisible to human eyes. Christ didn't rise from the dead in his body and abstain from blood and blood transfusions. Watch how beliefs in one God comes from the interpretation of this verse, Deuteronomy 6.4. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is what? One Lord. Well, my Bible says that too, doesn't it? Yours does too. But God there is what? Does anybody know what the Hebrew for God is there? Elohim. Elohim. And do you know what that means? Plural. What does it say in Genesis 1.26? What does it say? Let us make man in our image. So it's at least two that are saying they all had creative power. So they must have been eternal. So the Jehovah Witnesses. Jehovah Witnesses believe in the need for consensual adult baptism by full immersion in the name of the Father, Son, and the Spirit-directed organization. Isn't that interesting? They've changed their Bible. The Son and Spirit-directed organization. They don't want to say that, that the Holy Spirit because they believe that he's a force. Jehovah Witnesses grieve the Holy Spirit who taught us to baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Matthew 28, 19. I had an Adventist in Dunedin, a doctor at the university, say to me when I quoted that verse there that it shouldn't be in the Bible. I said, Sister White uses it 480 times, so that's good enough to me. Why, why do you think they don't want it in the Bible? Why do you think they don't want it in the Bible? Because they don't believe that the Holy Spirit is a person. Jehovah Witnesses believe in being politically neutral it is a fact of ancient and modern day history that in every nation and under all circumstances, true Christians have <coughs> endeavoured to maintain complete neutrality as, as to conflicts between factions of the world. Well, conflicts, yes, but we are to pay our taxes. Christ paid the temple tax because he said he doesn't want to offend people. JWs do not celebrate Christmas. Isn't that interesting? Jesus never commanded Christians to celebrate his birth. Rather, he told his disciples to memorialize or remember his death. Christians, Christmas and its customs came from ancient false religions. The early Christians did not celebrate Christmas or Easter, nor do true Christians today. Is that true or false? It's true. But Jehovah Witnesses used to celebrate Christmas. There's, in 1926, they're all having a big Christmas party. Do you follow me? So, witnesses used to celebrate Christmas. Let's go on. JWs do not celebrate birthdays. Jehovah Witnesses take note that God's word reports unfavorably about birthday celebrations and so shun these celebrations. But, Jehovah Witnesses used to celebrate birthdays, right? In there, and I say to them that, so you found out new light. Yes, they say, we found out new light. I said, well, one day you might find some new light on the Sabbath. You see, Serena Williams is a Jehovah Witness who not, will not celebrate her baby's birthday. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, James 1.8. The Watchtower teaches that the cross is pagan and Jesus was crucified on a stake and not a cross. Thus the weight of evidence indicates that Jesus died on an upright stake and not on a traditional cross. What I'm saying is that they're straining at gnats and swallowing camels. Is that a fair statement? They're arguing about how Jesus was killed on the cross but, or a stake, but they're shredding God's word. But in the past, they used the cross as a symbol. Can you see that brooch they had? Does anybody know what it says? It's a cross and a crown. Do you know who that symbol was? Knights Templar. The Knights Templar. Jesus died for our sins, which is transgression of the law on a cross or a stake. JWs transgress God's law, yet argue about how he was crucified. Ye blind guides which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel, Matthew 23, 24. The watchtower flip-flops over the beast and antichrist. They used to teach that the beast that was and is not and yet is the papal empire restored. But what do they teach today? The same beast or organization which was which and is not and is to come, the Hague World Court, the League of Nations. And what do they teach on the right? Hence the wild beast must reappear. The seven headed scarlet colored beast 
was again out of the again out of the abyss. It was the same beast, the United Nations. Can you see how people have infiltrated the Jehovah Witnesses and have made them uh, contradict the Antichrist? His number is 666, the man of sin, the papacy. Jehovah Witness organizations and church structure. Today they have Jehovah God, then Jesus Christ underneath him, and then the faithful and discreet slave class. And then we have elders in the churches and ministerial servants. Presidents of the Watchtower, Russell, Rutherford, Knorr, Franz, Henschel, and Adams. Like Mormons, the JWs believe they are the only restoration of the true and original church. Virtually the entire history of the Christian church through the ancient and medieval periods was a history of apostasy. The real restoration of the church to true religion did not take place until the 1870s when Russell began his Bible class. Is it fair to say that if you're going to claim to preach the original truth, that if you went to Matthew, Mark, Luke and John in the book of Acts, you'd find that truth they're teaching. But neither the Mormons teach it nor the Jehovah Witnesses. Something else I use with Jehovah Witnesses is this. If I'm meeting with Mormons, I say to them, I was studying with the Jehovah Witnesses and they told me that uh, Jesus was going to come back in 1874, then 1878, then 1914, world peace, then 1918, 19. 20 and then 1924 or 25 and I said none of them came true so they smile and say well they're false prophets aren't they but they've just dug a hole for themselves because then I tell them that Joseph Smith their prophet said he'd become the president of the United States he didn't he said he would uh, Jesus would come back in 1891 he didn't he said that the uh, there were Quakers like men looked like Quakers living on the moon. Well, recent scientific evidence has shown that that's not true. And also he said that the 10 lost tribes are at the North Pole. So they dug a hole for themselves. You can play it back and forwards. Jehovah Witnesses against the Mormons or the Mormons against the Jehovah Witnesses. We met some Jehovah Witnesses. We're doing the whole of Westport. Oh, well, Peter, you were there. And Chris was talking to this Adventist lady on the lawn because her husband was not a... Um, a believer. So she went outside with a Bible and Christine was in there and I came along. So Christine was adding to this lady's uh, evidence against the two Mormons and I came along and said they were arguing about Sabbath and Sunday and I came past and wound down the window and said, "Go and have you got your Book of Mormon there? Yes. Look up Messiah 1316. Do you know what it says? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. They don't see that. They blink. JWs say they're the only right religion. That remaining one right religion is that of Jehovah Witnesses. It is not conceited for us to say that. Well, yeah, remember, uh, Watchtower authority resembles papal and Mormon hierarchical system. Jehovah Witnesses members dutifully believe exactly what the Watchtower Society tells them rather than searching for themselves in the scriptures. The Watchtower calls the society an organization to direct the minds of God's people. They have also published that Jehovah's, Jehovah's organization should influence our every decision. JWs must recognize Watchtower authority as of God. That's blasphemy, isn't it? The Watchtower was so elevated in the church that the Watchtower claimed we must recognize as not only Jehovah's God as our father, but his organization as our mother. That's papal, isn't it? So the Watchtower claims it is under God's direct supervision. Jehovah's organization has a visible part on earth which represents the Lord and is under his direct supervision. Is not the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society the one and only channel which the Lord has used in dispersing his truth continually since the beginning of the harvest period? The Watchtower considers itself the only path to salvation. Unless we are in touch with this channel of communication, the Watchtower Society that God is using, we will not progress 
along the road to life, no matter how much Bible reading we do. That's blasphemy. Come to Jehovah's Organisation for Salvation. To come to Jehovah's Organisation for Salvation. Watchtower says it is the only body on earth directed by God. Jehovah's organization alone in all the earth is directed by God's Holy Spirit or active force. Note, this is the same as the Mormons and Catholics believe. JWs must meekly follow the Watchtower organization. We should meekly go along with the Lord's theocratic organization. More blasphemy. The Bible tells us, however, to base our belief on God's word rather than early or earthly organizations. Then Peter and the other... Uh, Apostles answered and said, what? We ought to obey who? God rather than men, Acts 5.29. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me, John 5.39. In the Jehovah Witness Bible, they've got ye search the scriptures, which by adding that word, they condemn themselves because they've changed a direct command of God into an observation. In Romans 10.17, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But Jesus said he has other sheep not of this fold and the other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring and they shall hear my voice and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. John ten sixteen. That's the Gentiles were going to come in. Scripture is only correctly interpreted through the watchtower. That's blasphemy, isn't it? Watchtower claims sole ability to interpret scripture for the people. The Bible cannot be properly understood without Jehovah's visible organization in mind. Watchtower condemns Bible alone as a means of obtaining salvation. People cannot see the divine plan in studying the Bible by itself. Is that true? It is true because their plan cannot be found in the Bible. It's got to be twisted and, and interpreted differently to make it fit. Watchtower claims their publications alone are enough for salvation. That's blasphemy also. That's their books. Watchtower says Jehovah detests those who think for themselves. See the psychological battle against Jehovah witnesses that might be pricked by the Holy Spirit? The apostate thinks he knows better than his fellow Christians, better also than the faithful and discreet slave. That's the headquarters, the Watchtower, through whom... He has learnt the best part, if not all he knows, about Jehovah's God and his purposes. He develops a spirit of independence and becomes proud in heart, something detestable to Jehovah. See the psychology in that? Watchtower says Jehovah detests those who think for themselves. So they've made these people into puppets. Jehovah witnesses call quitters mentally diseased. But early Christians compared church's teachings with the scriptures so as not to be deceived. Yeah. Now the latter were more no noble-minded than those in Thessalonica, for they received the word with the greatest earnestness of mind, carefully examining the scriptures daily as to whether these things were so. So what does that do? It puts the Bible over and above the, the watchtower or the Adventist headquarters or whatever. The haughty say it is sufficient to read the Bible exclusively. Haughty ones say that it is sufficient to read the Bible exclusively. But Jesus discards Watchtower teaching by urging his followers to search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. The Watchtower claims its teachings like the Bible. Wow, the world is full of Bibles. Why then do the people not know which way to go, because they do not also have the teaching or law of the mother which is light. But the Bible is the true light, not the watchtower. Thy word is a what? Lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for what? Doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The New World Translation Watchtower Bible. Up until 1960, the Watchtower Society used the King James Version. I had an Englishman turn up when I lived in North Canterbury and he came in on his own. He's a Jehovah Witness and he's quite bolshy. I, I thought it felt that it was rude. You don't go into someone's place and start spouting off, but he did. And I said to him, 
he started talking about the Godhead, that we believed in the Trinity. And I said to him, I've got a verse in the Jehovah Witness Bible that says that Jesus is Jehovah. He said, you will not. I said in 1 Timothy 3.16, it says, great is the mystery of godliness, God appeared in the flesh. And he said, that's not in the Jehovah Witness Bible, that's the King James. So I opened the cover and the Jehovah Witnesses used the King James Bible up until 1960. And I opened the front page and it's got printed by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. Do you get it? And he said, well, I don't believe that. And I asked him, I said, would you pray for me? He said, I will not. He would not pray for me. They don't pray for you, right? And they don't pray to Jesus. So what happened? I, uh, he said, I will not pray for you. You have a Trinitarian God. And he said, you have a different God to me. I said, you got, that's something we can agree on. So just remember, they used the King James Bible to 1960. The Greek text, the Greek text that we have used as the basis for the New World Translation is the widely accepted Westcott and Hort text of 1881. Who's read about Westcott and Hort? You have, Peter. They were Jesuit plants in the Church of England. By reason of this acknowledged excellency, but we have also taken into consideration other texts, including those prepared by D. Eberhardt Nesle, the Spanish Jesuit scholar Jose Maria Bova, and another Jesuit scholar, A. Merck. Can you smell a rat? The UBS text of 1975 and the Nestle Adelan text of 1979 were consulted to update the critical apparatus in this edition. JWs believed the Roman Catholic Church is a corrupt religious harlot, yet still used Jesuit manuscripts. <coughs> Excuse me. Watchtower once taught the papacy was the harlot, who ruled the kings of the earth. Greek language expert calls the New World Translation radically biased and dishonest. But there on the front page of that Awake magazine, you can see, protect yourself from fraud. And yet they are up to their neck in fraud themselves. Biblical scholar says JW translation is intellectually dishonest. That's Dr. William Barclay. The Watchtower Translation Committee did not understand Greek or Hebrew. Four of the five men in the committee had no Hebrew or Greek training whatsoever. Fred, Fred W. Franz was the, the president of the Watchtower Society, claimed to know Greek and Hebrew in court, but then he was found out to be lying. And, but the next day in court in Scotland, Fred W. Franz changed his story and is exposed as a liar in court. J.W. Translator claims to translate the Bible as accurately as possible. It is a very responsible thing to translate the Holy Scriptures from their original language of Hebrew, Aramaic and Greek into modern speech. That is a very sobering thought. The translators of this work who fear and love the divine author of the Holy Scriptures feel towards him a special responsibility to transmit his thoughts and declarations as accurately as possible. That's blasphemy. Do you know what they did in John 1.1? 1, 1? Who knows what they did there? In the beginning was the? And the word was with God and the word was a God. They put a in there because he can't be Jehovah. Watchtower states they will avoid colouring their translation with JW doctrine, doctrines. The endeavouring, the green bit there, the the endeavour of the New World Bible Translation Committee has been to avoid this snare of religious traditionalism. That's blasphemy. Watchtower ignores God's warning not to tamper with his word. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life. That's serious, isn't it? And out of the holy city. JWs introduced Jehovah 237 times dishonestly in their New Testament. They introduced the word Jehovah 237 times in the next text of the New Testament and it does not occur once in any known Greek manuscript that I don't think is responsible scholarship. They try to denigrate the status of Jesus from the eternal Son of God to a created being. Several examples of dishonest JW Bible changes. All old manuscript error and omission adopted Adoption of Catholic verses and changes to fit their own 
doctrine. John 1.1, 1, 1, John 1, 1.3, 5.24, John 6.47, they're all in the book of John. In the beginning, the Word was, and the Word was what? With God, and the Word was what? A God. They, they try to make him a lesser God, a created God. All things came into existence through him. And apart from him, meaning he was also came into existence from God. Do you see that they put the red bit in there? Blasphemy. Now we see judgment. He that hears my word and believes him that sent me has everlasting life and he does not come into judgment. Does anybody know what the King James verse says there? Condemnation. Condemnation. There's a big difference, meaning there is a judgment and we're judged by the Ten Commandments but you will not be condemned in the judgment. But here, the Jehovah Witness Bible is doing away with the judgment. Here, Watchtower follows Rome and nearly all modern translations by adding ye, and hence destroys Protestant principle of Bible authority. The King James says, Jesus said what? Search the scriptures. That's a command of Christ to search the scriptures because you think that by means of them, you will have eternal life. By putting ye in there, which is not in the Greek, do you know what they've done? They've changed a command of Christ to search the Scriptures into just an observation. That's blasphemy. Most truly I say to you, he that believeth on Christ has everlasting life. They have, they have left the uh, on me out. Watch how Bible causes confusion, but God is not the author of confusion. 1 Corinthians 14.33 The following verses were omitted from the New, the new World Translation. They, there are a whole lot of them. You can quietly ask your witness guest to look up some of these texts for you, for you. After two or three, they will get decidedly agitated and say, these verses were not in the original. You can inform them that their Bible is a Jesuit Bible. These verses are in 95% of known manuscripts, which are the Byzantine or received texts. Let's have a quick look. Matthew 7.21, you can see the verse is missing. Howbeit this kind goes not out, but by prayer and fasting. For the Son of Man has come to save that which is lost. Is that important? It's left out of their Bible there. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense, make long prayer. Therefore, ye shall receive the greater damnation. That's been left out. Anyone got any ideas why? Because the leadership are infallible, but here we're showing they're very human. <clears throat> if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Missed out. Again, now that's not a great doctrinal, but it's against the principle of not touching God's word. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Left, missed, me, left out in verse 44 and then in 46. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. And the scripture was fulfilled which says he was numbered with the transgressors. Left out again, Mark 15, 28. Two men shall be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Missed out again. From necessity, he must release one of them at the feast. Missed out. Luke twenty three seventeen. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Who, whosoever then, uh, then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Acts eight thirty seven. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Why do you think they took that out? Because it's adult baptism as a condition of an outward public demonstration of your faith. Notwithstanding it, please Silas to abide there still. Missed out, not important doctrinally, but it's against the principle of taking things out. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reasoning among themselves. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Watchtower falsifies their Bible. Now listen carefully to this because they break their own rules. Now the mafia have rules. Do you know that? And you don't break them. The mafia says that if you have a hit on a guy, you don't touch his wife or his children. Do you follow me? And there's a stink if you break the rules. So the watchtower 
have made these rules. Whether they're right or whether they're wrong is, um, is the watchtower set the rules for their Bible translation from the Greek and saw fit to authorise the translating of the Greek words kurios and theos as Jehovah. So they made the rules. Wherever the Greek words kurios and theos existed, they would translate them Jehovah. However, they have been unfaithful to their own rules. If they had observed their own rules, the following verses would have made Jesus Jehovah. Isn't that interesting? Jehovah Witnesses do not believe Jesus as Jehovah, so brazenly change the word of God. Matthew one twenty three should read, With us is Jehovah. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name, what? Emmanuel, which being interpreted as what? God with us. But the Jehovah Witness, that's Theos, so the Jehovah Witnesses made the rule that it must be uh, interpreted as Jehovah. But what did they? With us is God, which is an, a contradiction to their belief that he wasn't God. 1 Corinthians 12.3 12, 12, should read, Jesus is Jehovah. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. But what did they say? And nobody can say Jesus is Lord, but Lord there is curios. So how should have the Jehovah Witnesses, according to their rules, translated that verse? Jehovah. So Jesus is Jehovah, but they broke their own rules. And in Philippians 2.11, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. How should they have tated, uh, translated the word Lord, which is kurios? It should have read that Jesus Christ is Jehovah, but they broke their own rules. John 1.1 1, 1 has been changed to make Jesus merely a God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the begin and, and the word was a ah, God, they put it. They should have tr translated the word uh, theos there as Jehovah. With us as Jehovah. Acts 5.4 is mistranslated to protect Watchtower doctrine. Whilst it remains, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Who's that God? The Holy Spirit. Theos is here translated God instead of Jehovah. This is contrary to their own rules, which it follows, if followed, would make the Holy Spirit Jehovah. Jehovah Witness and the Divine Name. That's a tetragrammaton. To this generation in the 20th century, to our own generation since AD 1914, the name of the eternal God is Jehovah. To all eternity, this is his holy name, and as the memorial of him, it is the name by which we are to remember him to all eternity. It is his unchangeable name. From the beginning of man's existence to Moses' day, it had not changed. And from Moses back there in 1514 BC till today, that name has not changed. So after all these thousands of years of time, it is fitting for us to use that name in a worthy way. That they made that in their, in their publications. The Watchtower claims Exodus 3.15 shows Jehovah as God's true only name. What do we see there? This is what you are to say to the sons of Israel. Jehovah, the God of your forefathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name to time indefinite. But the JW Bible also calls God the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, right? Since God is often identified as the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob without any mention of the name Jehovah, doesn't this mean the name Jehovah is not the only way that God can be addressed? We are told in the Lord's Prayer to address him as our Father which art in heaven. Jehovah does not occur even once in the Greek New Testament. According to the Greek manuscripts of the New Testament, the word Jehovah does not occur a single time in the New Testament. This is highly significant, for if Jehovah was to be the sole name for God in all generations, then the word would certainly occur in the New Testament, but it does not occur there anywhere, despite the fact that the Watchtower 
New World Translation deceitfully inserts the term throughout the New Testament in verses thought to refer exclusively to the Father. And Jesus taught us to pray to our Father, not Jehovah. You must pray then this way, Our Father in the heavens, let your name be sanctified. If Jehovah is the only eternal name of God, then shouldn't Jesus use it and teach others to use it? The JW Bible says Jesus is the only name that can save us. So Jehovah can't save us. We must approach Jehovah through Jesus. There is no other name under heaven and earth. JW New World Translation says, name of Jesus above all names, right? So Hebrew scholar says use of the name Jehovah is erroneous. Erroneously written and pronounced Jehovah to give the name Jivi, the vowels of the word for Lord, Hebrew Adonai, and pronounce it Jehovah is about as hybrid a combination as it would be to spell the name Germany with the vowels in the name Portugal, i.e. Germano. The monstrous combination of Jehovah is not older than 1520. Encyclopedia Britannica calls Jehovah interpretation artificial. Jehovah witnesses claim to know God's true name but ignore Jehovah's Sabbath day of the fourth commandment. If you love me, you will observe my commandments. John 14, 15 from their own Bible. I will worship towards thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Psalm 138, 15. Do you know what we've just done there? God has put his name second to his word. And his name is His word is his character. His name is important and it's holy because the third commandment tells us not to use his name in vain. So the Jehovah Witnesses are doing the same thing. They're putting his, making a big issue of the name as it says in Luke 6, 46. Jesus said, Why call me what? Lord, Lord, but do not what he say. He told us to keep the Sabbath day holy along with all the other nine commandments. And the Jehovah Witnesses are not. They say we keep every day holy. Well, so we should. But They are wise above that which is written. For for my determination is to gather the nations to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Listen to this. For then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. So who was it that... uh, uh, brought the different languages into being, confused the tongues at, um, at the Tower of Babel? God. Peter, you might have found it. I've gone to the islands. You go to Vanuatu and you see some great big huge man kneeling down there and praying. And he says, Oh, Papa God, thank you for all you've done for us. Does God accept that? Of course he does. And he accepts the fact that he calls him Papa God. That's what their 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 tongue tells them. But what happens is, it remember Zephaniah three eight and nine. When the Lord comes back, we will all call on Him with one name. The JWs are calling out Lord Lord, but are not doing what Jehovah says. Every knee shall bow at the name of Jesus and Jehovah. See the differences there. Jesus tells us to be his, his witnesses, not Jehovah's witnesses. With the Watchtower's exclusive emphasis on Jehovah, do you think they are being obedient to these verses? The anointed class. Does anybody know about the 144,000? They're the, uh, they're the Jehovah witnesses. And they're the ones that go to heaven and you and I are going to live on a paradise on earth. JWs believe heaven is limited to the little flock of 144,000 faithful. The revelation limits to 144,000, the number that became a part of the kingdom and stand on heavenly Mount Zion. Thus it is seen that God never purposed to convert this old world and take all the good to heaven. There are only a few that find entrance into this kingdom, only a little flock when compared with earth's population. And have a guess who those little flock are? Jehovah Witnesses. The Jehovah Witnesses say the door closed on becoming part of the little flock in 1881. If our application of scripture be correct, 
the favour has now ended and in the language of the parable, the door was shut. But Jesus says that Abraham, Isaac and Jacob will be in heaven. Do you follow me? And that's in Matthew 8.11. J.W. switch from literal to symbolic halfway through Revelation 7.4. And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 sealed out of every tribe of the sons of Israel. Notice that the JW interpret the first half of the verse using a literal method of interpretation. They believe there will be a literal 144,000. However, they do not use the same rule for the second half of the verse. In other words, the Watchtower Society says there are literally 144,000 people, but this refers not to the literal tribes of Israel, but to the anointed class of Jehovah Witnesses. A great crowd is in heaven, not just a little flock. After these, Revelation 19, 1 from their own Bible. After these things, I heard what was as a loud voice of a great crowd in heaven. They said, praise Yah, you people. The salvation and the glory and the power belongs to our God. The great crowd is around the throne in heaven, not on earth. A great crowd which no man could number, standing before the throne. That's in heaven, around the throne. Jesus has prepared a place for us, so we will be there. He is heaven. That where I am, yeah, that where I am, ye also may be, from their own Bible. God does not restrict heaven to a chosen few. He he became to his own he he came to his own home, but his own people did not take him in. However, as many as did received him to them, he gave authority to become God's children because they were exercising faith in his name. John 1, 11 and 12. Our reward is in heaven, not on earth, as J.W. say. Yeah, the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Happy are those conscious of their spiritual need and sense, uh, need, since the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Happy are those who have been persecuted for righteousness' sake, since the kingdom of the heavens belong to them. There's a hundred million killed by the church, the medieval church through the dark ages. That's more than a hundred thousand, isn't it? Rejoice and leap for joy since your reward is great in the heavens. Jesus repeatedly mentions the kingdom in heaven, not earth. Now this is interesting. Only the anointed class take part in the Lord's Supper. There is only a remnant of such spiritual sons now living And these are the ones who properly partake of the emblems. That's a communion. This then accounts for the vast majority of Jehovah Witnesses being observers and not partakers. Do not this in remembrance of me. Well, 1 Corinthians 11.25 says, Do this in remembrance of me. And we're to take the communion. Why? Because it says in Romans 6.10, Hebrews 10.10.10.12 and 1 Peter 3.18, that Jesus died how many times for us? Once. So we take the communion in remembrance of him. But the Jehovah Witnesses say only the 144,000 are going to take it. And Jehovah Witnesses put the bread there and the wine. They just look at the emblems instead of eating and drinking as instructed by Christ. I met a Jehovah Witness once and I said, have any of you had seen anybody take the communion and they said yes I saw an old man go up one day he struggled up there with his walking stick tongue in cheek and he took the communion and the bread and everybody sat there and watched him and I said how did he know that he was part of the 144,000 Jehovah told him there was a way which appeareth right unto man you can ask the Jehovah witnesses Jesus said do this until I come You say he came secretly in 1914. So why do you still observe it? Do you see what I'm getting at? Not all members can take communion. Only the 144,000 members. They are the only ones who go to heaven and are born again. God tells us that communion is for the whole body, not just for a select few. But JWs don't tell you that they used to participate in the Lord's Supper. On Sunday night, 13th of April, 17,961 Jehovah Witnesses then called the Bible students celebrated the Lord's Supper after the US government freed eight Jehovah Witness leaders from jail. Jesus had set us a pattern to follow, not just observe, right? 
also ought to wash the feet of one another. For I set the pattern for for you that just as I did to you, you should do also. Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. That's what Jesus said to Peter. But the Bible also said, said we are to examine ourselves. Is that right? We're to examine ourselves, not others, to see if we are, can, are worthy to take part. Christ never gave churches the right to decide who would and who would not get the spiritual benefit of communion. Christ opened communion to all, but JWs pro- prohibit nearly all. JWs say the other sheep look forward to renewed earth, not heaven. That's, they, they think that we're going to be on heaven and uh, on earth. But the JW Bible tells us to seek things above. If, however, you were raised up with the Christ, go on seeking the things, what? Above. There, keep your minds fixed on the things above, not on the things upon the earth. Old Testament saints look forward to a heavenly country. That's, but now they are reaching out for a better place. That is one belonging to heaven. Hebrews 11. This earth is not Christ's kingdom. John 18, 36. Jesus answered, My kingdom is what? Not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. The Bible says all God's sheep will become one flock. I surrender my soul in behalf of the sheep. This fold, those also I must bring. It is important to note that Jesus did not say there will be one fold in heaven and one on earth. We will all be together as one flock under one shepherd. The other sheep refer to the Gentiles. JWs believe God does not judge us on our whole lives. Isn't that interesting? This means that when a person is resurrected, he will be judged on the basis of what he does during judgment day, not on what he did before he died. That's blasphemy, isn't it? That's giving people a license to sin. The Bible says God will judge everything we do. Ecclesiastes 12, 14. That's from their own Bible. For the true God himself will bring every sort of work into the judgment in relation to every hidden thing as to whether it be good or bad. That's why Jesus Christ died and it's a free gift for us to put our sins on Jesus Christ and ask him for power not to sin again. I tell you that every unprofitable saying that men speak, they will render an account concerning it on the judgment day. Matthew twelve thirty six. Giving an answer, part two. How long have we got? What's that? We've got? Yeah. yeah we've, twi- we've had had an hour and a bit. Jehovah Witnesses and creation, they are wise above that which is written. The Bible says God created heaven and earth in what? Six days. And he rested on the seventh day. And he sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his works which God created and made. But JWs compromise with evolutionists over creation and says that days could mean millenniums. Days are used in the Bible can include summer and winter and passing of seasons. The day of harvest involves many days. And so that's their t- typical attitude to disprove something. A thousand years are likened to a day. It would seem reasonable that the days of Genesis creation could likewise have embraced long periods of times. This is a compromise with evolution. God divided the days of creation into light and darkness, and there came to be evening and there came to be morning, the third day. These verses show that each day was made up of morning and evening. If each day was a thousand years, that would mean roughly 500 years of darkness would separate the nearly 500 years of light. If this was the case, then the plant, plants and animals God created would surely die without sunlight for such a long period of time. The days of creation were the same as the days in the fourth commandment. Take note, each day, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Why? For six days shalt thou labour and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the what? Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within the gates. For in what? 
Six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day. So each day in creation in the fourth commandment is approximately a 24-hour day. Do you follow me? Jehovah Witnesses and God's law, there's in the watchtower, should you obey the Ten Commandments? The watchtower says the law was only for the Jews, not all humanity. That's blasphemy, isn't it? The law was not given to all humankind. Jehovah made a covenant or an agreement with the descendants of Jacob who became the nation of Israel. Jehovah gave his laws to this nation only. That's blasphemy, isn't it? Do you agree with that? But the Bible says keeping the law is the whole duty of man. Ecclesiastes 12.13 Let us hear the conclusion of the what? Whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. Not Jews alone. Adam kept the Sabbath and he wasn't Jewish. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made and he rested on the seventh day. And God blessed the seventh day. So Adam and Eve were not Jews and they kept the Sabbath. Christ said the Sabbath was made for man kind and not just the Jews and Sabbath keeping was fourth of the Ten Commandments so he went on to say to them the Sabbath came into existence for the sake of man to rest on that we might recognize and acknowledge in the world that Jesus created heaven and earth in six days and rested on the seventh day the watchtower says Sabbath rest should be for all seven days not one they the this spiritual rest is observed not only one day a week but for all seven days. That's blasphemy again, isn't it? They are wise above that which is, is written. The watchtower says Moses broke the first set of stones and that he got another set of stones and wrote the law on them himself. J.W. Bible says the Sabbath will be kept in heaven. Isn't that interesting? Isaiah 66, 22 and 23. And it shall, will certainly occur that from new from new moon to new moon and from Sabbath to Sabbath, all flesh will come in to bow down before me. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Watchtower Society says JWs don't have to keep the commandments of God, but their Bible says they must keep them. That's from John 14, 15 from, to the, for the New World Translation. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. So haven't read their own Bible. Matthew 19, 17. If, if though you want to enter into life, observe the commandments continually. Jesus said in scripture that those who don't keep the commandments are liars. 1 John 2, 4. The one who says I have come to know him and does not observe his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in this person. That's in their own Bible. Christ is the end of the law. Romans 10, 4. The Jehovah Witnesses claim this verse means we no longer need to keep the Ten Commandments because Christ has abolished them. But the Jewish New Testament translation makes the verse clearer. For the goal at which the Torah aims is the Messiah who offers righteousness to everyone who trusts. And it says in Psalm 119, 172 that what? That thy word, thy tr word is righteousness. Paul emphasizes the importance of God's law. Romans 3.21 Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we establish the law. Romans 2.13 For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Romans 7.12 Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. And Romans 7.22 For I delight in the law. Law of ordinance is abolished, not the Ten Commandments. That's Colossians 2, 14, 17. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinance, that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. The Ten Commandments are called the law of liberty, not bondage. So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Surely this cannot be the same law Paul said was against us in Colossians 2.14. Clearly the law of liberty was not abolished, but the law of ordinances was abolished at the cross, which pointed to Christ. David calls the Ten Commandments a delight. Psalm 119.77 
comparing the Ten Commandments and the ceremonial laws. Well, that's a whole sermon in itself. But the moral law was written by God. The ceremonial law was spoken by Moses. There is a remnant church in the last days which keeps his commandments and love Jesus. Revelation 12, 17. And that's from their own New World Translation. So the dra dragon went off to wage war with the ra remaining ones of her offspring who observe the commandments of God and have the work of bearing witness of Jesus. No, they, their ho the whole thing is confusion. The holy ones, those who keep the commandments of God and the, hold fast to the faith of Jesus. That's Revelation 14.12 and in Revelation 22.14. Blessed are they which do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. That's in the KJV Bible. All modern Bibles have what the Jehovah Witness New World Translation has. Happy are those who wash their robes, so they may have authority to go to the tree of life. Jehovah Witnesses are deceiving themselves and others out of eternal life by rejecting God's Ten Commandments. Jehovah Witnesses and the nature of God. In this this watchtower, September the 15th, 2005 issue. Who is Jesus, right? Who is Jesus? Jesus, the Christ, a created individual, is the second greatest personage of the universe. Jehovah God and Jesus Christ together constitute the superior authorities, Romans 13.1. Well, the superior authorities are the earthly powers. Towards all creation, he was formed countless millenniums ago, as the first and only direct creation of his father, Jehovah. And because of his, his proved faithful, faithless integrity, faultless integrity, was appointed by Jehovah as his vindicator and the chief agent of life towards mankind. JWs believe Jesus as a created being. Witnesses teach and believe that Jesus was created first and was then used to bring other things into being. Jehovah's first creation was his only begotten son, the beginning of the creation of God. This one, the firstborn of all creation, was used by Jehovah in creation all things. Those in the heavens and those upon the earth, the things visible and the things invisible. JWs say Jesus was not equal and was never co-equal with God. His, Christ coming to earth, was not an incarnation because he was begotten of God. As a child, he became a perfect human, the equal of Adam before his fall. When Jesus died, his human nature was annihilated as a sacrifice. His obedience unto death was rewarded by God in, the revive, uh, God in reviving him in the spirit and divine nature. Thus, throughout his entire existence, Jesus was never co-equal with God. There was a time when he was not. Thus, he is not eternal. On earth, he was nothing more than a man, although a perfect man. Charles T. Russell. The Watchtower challenges us to prove Jesus is Jehovah. This is, they said, if Jesus of the New Testament is Jehovah of the Old Testament, as many claim, should there not at least be one biblical reference saying that Jesus is Jehovah? Yet there is not one. That's what the Watchtower, March 15, 1975, said. Let's see them. Since the Watchtower challenges us, us to prove Jesus is Jehovah, let's take up this challenge and prove that the Bible supports the Jesus of the New Testament being the Jehovah of the Old Testament. Micah 5.2 But thou, Bethlehem, Ephratah, Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. Now, do you know they've changed everlasting and they'll pay for it on the judgment day? Why would they change everlasting? Because they don't believe that Jesus was everlasting. The Bible claims the Messiah would be called Emmanuel, meaning what? Isaiah 7.14 Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and call his name what? Emmanuel. And what does it say in Matthew 1.23? Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name, what? Emmanuel, which being interpreted is what? 
But do you know what the Jehovah Witnesses said about Curios and Theos when they made the rules as the mafia makes the rules? They said when Theos, meaning God there, has to be translated as Jehovah, which it would interpret, Emmanuel would interpret Jehovah with us. Isaiah 9, 6. For there has been a child born to us. This is from their own Bible. There has been a son given to us and the pricely rule will come to be upon his shoulder and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, what? Mighty God. And then when I speak to the Jehovah Witnesses about that, they change the subject and say, he's not almighty God, he's only mighty God. And they say, let's go over here. I said, no, let's read on. Mighty God, that means we've got two gods now. We've got almighty and mighty. And what does the next verse say? Eternal Father. This baby was the eternal Father. Now that's in our Bible. How do we, great is the mystery of godliness. Et- Jesus was the eternal Father. Now you argue, you argue that out with him when you get to heaven. Prince of Peace. J.W.'s New World Translation shows Jesus as the eternal Father. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Isaiah 8.8 8. And he shall pass through Judah. He shall overflow and go over. He shall reach even to the neck and the stretching out of his wings shall fill the breadth of thy land. Oh, what? Emmanuel. And in Isaiah chapter 6, it says, holy, holy, holy. What does that mean? Three persons in the Godhead. When Jesus said on the cross, he said, my God, my God, what did that mean? He was speaking to the Holy Spirit and the Father because he was the third part of the Godhead. The Bible speaks of Godhead, that means more than one. For as much then as we are offsprings of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's devices, Acts 17, 29. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. His eternal power and what? His eternal power, that's Jesus, and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. In Colossians 2.9, For in him Christ dwelleth what? All the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And in John, 1 John 5.7, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Just very quickly, we're going to close in 10 minutes or less. 1 John 5, 7 is not in the Jehovah Witness Bible. It is not in the Bibles, according to the theologians, prior to the 16th century. Well, Dr. Nolan of Egyptology fame did a study on the the, uh, Waldensian Bibles, and he found that 1 John 5, 7 was in the Waldensian Bibles back to the 5th century. And what does it say in Revelation 12? Revelation 12 says they fled into the wilderness against the dragon, right? That was the Waldensians, where they were, com- they were, were comforted by the Old and New Testament. Matthew 28, 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Matthew 16 and 17. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon, lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Thou believest that there is one God, thou dost well. The devils also believe and tremble. The nature of God is a great mystery to us. And without controversy, great is the what? Mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Tell me, when was God manifest in the flesh? When Jesus Christ came, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles. We can never fully understand the nature of God. Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. JW say only one God. Jehovah is the only true God. You say, do you believe in one God? Yes. All, all right. How let us now? How 
Now let us see how you understand John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Yes, who is the God? He is Jehovah. Is he almighty or mighty? He is almighty. All right, and who is a God? He is Jesus. Is he almighty? No, he is the mighty one. Where, where did he come from? He was created by Jehovah. This shows the absurdity of the Watchtower interpretation JWs believe that Jehovah is almighty and Jesus is mighty God. Effectively, they believe in a big God and a little God and that the big God created the little God. Does the Watchtower really teach belief, teach belief in one, one God or do they now have two gods? The Watchtower says the Trinity doctrine is confusing and therefore cannot be of God. But the Bible says we can never fully understand God. Exposing the Trinity... Well, we don't believe in the Trinity. We believe in the Godhead. And I'm concerned when people label us as being Roman Catholic Trinitarians. There is one God, yet the Father and Christ are one. Matthew, and the scribes said unto him, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but him. I and my Father are one. John 10.30 As concerning, therefore, the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world and that there is none other God but one. First Corinthians. Listen, I'm going to finish on these three Bible verses because you can use them with Jehovah Witnesses. You go to Revelation 1.8 and you read out the verse, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says Jehovah God, the one who is and who was and who is coming, the Almighty. You ask the Jehovah Witnesses, who is this? Who is it? It's Jehovah. Do you follow me? So Jehovah takes the title of Alpha and Omega. Is that right? Then we go to Revelation 22.12. I'm the Alpha and the Omega. Who's that? That's Jesus. Ask the Jehovah Witness, who is this? They will say Jehovah. He's also the first and the last, the beginning and the end. So they agree that he takes the title of Alpha and Omega, the first and the last and the beginning and the end. Then we go back to this one and we're going to finish on it. And when I saw him, this is Revelation 1.18, and when I saw him, I fell as dead at his feet and he laid his right hand upon me. Who's he talking to? Who gave the revelation to John on Patmos? Jesus Christ. And said, do not be fearful, I am the first and the last. Who's the first and the last there? Jehovah. Jehovah took the title of the first and the last and the living one and I became dead. And you can ask the Jehovah Witnesses, when did Jehovah die? Jehovah died on Calvary, friends. Thank you for your attention tonight. Tomorrow we'll do a little bit more of this. Any questions? We've got two minutes. No? Okay, let's bow our heads for a prayer and we'll close. Father in heaven, we do thank you for having the liberty to worship you in spirit and in truth. And Lord, great is the mystery of godliness. But what has been given to us in Chronicles 2020, it says that what you've given us is for us and our children. And I pray, Lord, that we might rightly divide the word of God, that we will not be wise above that which is written. And I pray that you would open our eyes and hearts, that we might fully understand how to be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh us a reason of the hope that is in us with meekness and fear. I pray that you would bless us all as we go to our rest tonight, Lord, and rise us up in the morning, knowing that there's a work to do and another day closer to thy return. Help us to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. In the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our elder brother, high priest, soon coming king. Amen.